And it's going to be tough to follow that last presentation, but um, with the topic of this discussion is a novel mechanical thrombus aspiration device. Um, my disclosures are here, which are not, re not relevant. Um, with any aspiration device, we always need to consider two pathologic states. First, thrombus, and the second, emboli. So what is the epidemic of thrombus in the U.S.? Approximately 250,000 Americans suffer from an ST elevation MI. Deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, approximately 300 to 600,000 Americans per year. Stroke, 795,000 Americans per year. And then acute limb ischemia, I found approximately 45 to 50,000 Americans per year. A fact, that in terms of emboli, as you can see here in this picture um, uh, with this emb uh, embolic protection device, the incidence of clinically, clinically significant embolization from peripheral arterial interventions is approximately one to 5%. If we look at the data, the embolic signal, as shown here by Lamb and all, with different SFA interventions can range from as low as less than 10% with wire crossing to as high as 50 to 60% with atherectomy. But what's interesting is that we get embolic signals with just about any intervention we do, whether it be crossing with a wire, balloon angioplasty, stenting, or atherectomy. In this study, however, in terms of clinically significant emboli, only one patient had it. This was a very eloquent um, collaboration of studies where Mueller and Helsbeck and all looked at uh, a series of trials, and they showed the incidence of embolic debris in the FEMPOP interventions ranged from 0 to 25 percent uh, angioplasty and stent interventions, 3.8 to 37 percent thrombolytic therapy, and then anywhere from 25 to 65 percent in rheolytic thrombectomy. So what are the treatment options when you have emboli or thrombus? Well, with thrombus medications such as lytics or glycoprotein 2B3As or anticoagulants, balloon angioplasty, laser arthrectomy, and then aspiration systems, whether it be manual or electromechanical. In terms of emboli, again, aspiration devices, manual or electromechanical. So what are the difference between manual and electromechanical aspiration? Well, the manual, a syringe catheter type system, is globally available, it's very easy to use. However, you have limited control, limited power, and speed. Whereas the electromechanical, you have good speed, it can be costly, you have to buy capital equipment, training, and it's time consuming. So what are the considerations when you look at manual aspiration systems like most of us have in our labs? Well, number one, the aspiration force, the length of the catheter shaft, the diameter of the catheter such that you can pick up large or small debris, and then the distal tip area, can you get that large debris in the catheter? So this is a, uh, a compilation of all the asp aspiration catheter characteristics. With this novel aspiration system that I'm describing, the Aspire catheter system, look at the top two uh, horizontal axes, the, asp the Aspire RX and the Aspire Max. What I think is important when you're trying to um, aspirate debris is what is the diameter of the catheter, both distally at the transition site if it's a rapid exchange, and then the proximal site. And the Aspire Max has probably one of the largest diameters across all fields compared to the typical aspiration catheter systems that we have. What hooks onto this novel aspiration system is the Aspire mechanical aspirator. What's interesting and novel about this is that this mechanical aspirator can hook onto any catheter or sheath. So if you have a crossing catheter, whether it be from 014 to 035, it can attach to it. So you don't have to pull a, a special aspiration catheter. It's a one-way barrel valve. Um, so it's one way flow from the catheter into the bar barrel and prevents reinjection such that when you pull it back into the barrel and you release it, it opens up a two-way valve such that the uh, thrombus goes out into the bag. And that's what this plunger system describes. How you set it up? You hook the drainage ba bag to the Aspire catheter as seen in the top diagram. You hook up the catheter connection tubing, which is in the lower diagram as seen here by the arrow hooking to the catheter. 
usually putting a wire adapter on so you don't lose wire access. And then you pull the handle and release the plunger and draw heparinized flush into the barrel to treat it such that you have heparin in the system so it doesn't clot. And then you release and open the handle uh, to aspirate um, clot. Now what's interesting is with a typical syringe system, once you pull that negative pressure, as you pull the catheter back, depending on how fast you pull it, you lose pressure over time with a typical syringe system. However, with this system, you maintain that 760 millimeters of mercury pressure as you open and close because you reset the pressure constantly as you pull back or go forward with the system. So let's go through a case. So we have a 79-year-old female, typical comorbidities for peripheral arterial disease, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, heart disease, and stroke, non-healing ulcer on the left second toe. As you can see here, uh, on the left aspect of the sky, there's a complete uh, chronic total occlusion of the left SFA. There's one vessel runoff uh, to the anterior tibial to the foot. Intervention is performed with atherectomy. We have a good result. And then we place a stent. Excellent result. We go post-intervention to look at the runoff. And I think everyone can appreciate here that the dorsalis pedis is now occluded, most likely from emboli being pushed or breaking off and going into the distal circulation. So now what do we do? So I think most of us would place a wire distally, and this is me using this uh, novel aspiration system, the Aspire aspiration system, and I was able to uh, pull thrombus back through the catheter, through the plunger, into the bag, and then this is post-aspiration. I think everyone can appreciate um, that after, after approximately 30 sec seconds of uh, aspiring the clot or bringing the clot out of, with the aspiration system that we now have inline flow down the dorsalis pedis. And these are some of the pictures um, with acute uh, limb ischemia that we've seen, which we were able to pull out a large amount of clot with this system in a short period of time. Thank you very much.